Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, to those who are here in the room at uh, the SFU Gold Corp Center and to those uh, who are watching the live stream online, thanks a lot for joining us today. Uh, my name is Sue Wheatley, and I'm going to be your MC for today. Uh, I'm an executive project director with the Ministry of Jobs, Trade and Technology, and uh, I've had the privilege of being involved in this project uh, from the beginning. So today is a really exciting day. Before we continue, I would like to acknowledge that we're on the territory of the Coast Salish people, including the Musqueam Indian Band, the Squamish Nation, and the Salwatooth Nation. So, welcome. As I just said, I'm really excited about today. It has gone by really, really quick and really, really slow, depending on the day. Uh, so, um, uh, it is Startup and Residence Demonstration Day, but for the people who've been working on the project, it's STIR Demo Day. So. Uh, Startup in Residence is an experiment in digital government, and it's one that we hope will support growth in, the tech, in these tech companies by creating an opportunity for them to work with government and get to demonstrate that their skills and experience can really help out with government challenges, um, and it's certainly been a success so far. Um, we're here to celebrate the achievements um, and the determination um, of these project teams that have come together, um, working through some, uh, some challenges, through some big ideas, and uh, we're really excited about that. Um, our next speaker, our first speaker, uh, will surely have a little more to say about that. Um, as a part of his mandate, Minister Bruce Ralston is committed to growing BC's already strong tech and innovation sector, and today is a part of that. Uh, so, without further ado, I'd like to introduce BC's Minister of Jobs, Trade and Technology, Minister Bruce Ralston. Great. Thanks very much and good morning. I'm here bringing greetings on behalf of Premier John Horgan and the Government of British Columbia. I'm here with my Parliamentary Secretary, Rick Lumack. So you're getting tag team today. He's the Parliamentary Secretary responsible for technology. Um, uh, this is a really e exciting moment. This is a really exciting project. I had a chance to talk with some of the, the finalists here just earlier, and what this project was designed to do, I think, uh, was address a number of problems. And as we know, and some of the literature, the management literature about uh, uh, innovative disruption, looks at companies where um, they, they get caught out. They're too slow moving, innovative disruption happens, their lunch gets eaten, and as in the private sector, as a company, they might well disappear. Now, government is a, is a different species of, a, of enterprise, obviously, not always known for being fleet of foot or being innovative. I think uh, some smiles of recognition there, perhaps. <laughs> So, so, but, so to, do, to undertake this kind of project, I think, is really uh, in an imaginative and creative one. I want to compliment the leadership who brought this project about and the companies who participated. It, it is designed, and I, I, just, I think it does address a number of problems. One is, if you're a company who develops a, a product or service and you go out to sell it elsewhere, the typical question is, well, you're from British Columbia. Has anyone in British Columbia used it? Has the British Columbia government used it? And this, this program solves that problem by giving you a, a, the, a letter of reference. In other words, in your own jurisdiction, people thought enough of your product to hire you, to have you work on problems and solve them. And I think that's a very powerful recommendation and will assist the growth of, of startup companies. Uh, in, in addition, um, one of the things that I, I think is always difficult in bringing smaller startup companies into government is the process of the uh, RFP. And uh, I did confirm with the companies that the abbreviated RFP seems to work. In other words, easier to get in, uh, easier to get qualified, and easier to get to work. And so. Um, those problems, uh, I think, have been addressed in this program. We, obviously, it's in evolution, and we'll take suggestions as to how we might best go forward. But uh, certainly there is a challenge, uh, in, and these, these projects meet or begin to meet some of the challenges uh, in government. Uh, in uh, traditional startups, um, I was uh, down in, um, in, in uh, California. There's a startup called Plug and Play, which is a legendary, I think started Google and PayPal and a few others. But they are much more established now. But what they do is they bring in for certain sectors of industry, say an example would be transportation, 
they would bring in startup companies to address what they call the pain points. And so it seems to me that what this proposal and this uh, program does is address, begin to address some of the pain points of government. It's close to users and it provides real solutions in a way that perhaps in a busy work schedule and uh, an ordinary and the day-to-day -day routine of government department, they might not be able to address. So this is a very exciting uh, proposal. I want to congratulate the winners. I want to congratulate those who have uh, engaged in innovation to bring this program about and, uh, and to wish you uh, the best. I understand from talking to you, many of the uh, recipients um, that there are next steps imagined, and I can well imagine that given the success of this program, this is something that we will uh, we'll look at and expanding. So thank you very much. Congratulations to, to all the winners. Thank you, Minister. Uh, I would now like to call on Carl Anderson, who is the uh, Chief Executive Officer of the BC Innovation Council uh, Crown Agency. So come on up, Carl. Thank you. Ooh, on the stage, gotta love it. Uh, <laughs> thanks for the uh, introduction, Sue. Good morning, everyone. It's very nice to be here. I think this is a really exciting program. Before I get started, I'd like to recognize Minister for Jobs, Trade and Technology, Bruce, who is here, and also Parliamentary Secretary Rick Blumack for their efforts in supporting technology throughout this province. One of the really neat things about this government is that they're actually going out, talking to people and saying, how can we do something different? How can we make it happen even better? Which I think is very important. The BC Innovation Council is a crown agency of the province that helps fuel the local economy through the development and commercialization of innovative technologies in BC. We work with the government, key industries and entrepreneurs in regions across the province to understand their problems and help them solve them with BC expertise and technology. Our work fuels innovation, helps tech companies grow and offers non-tech companies a way to build efficiencies and competitive advantages using innovations in technology. As I mentioned, we work with government to help them innovate and try new approaches. It's one of these new approaches that you're about to see, or several of them actually you're about to see today. And we're going to witness these directly, and I think Sue's going to mention this. They're going to talk about it, but you do go back, and afterwards we want to see the actual demos. They're activated in the back tables, so do do that. Um, one of the best ways to fuel the economy in BC is to leverage the growth of BC companies through the innovative technology and talented entrepreneurs this province has to offer. The Startup and Residence Program embodies this idea. It's helped open the door for BC tech companies and local government to work together and solve real life challenges to people this province face daily. Tech is everywhere, and you can tell by the participants in this pilot, tech impacts all industries. I'm very excited to see firsthand what these six companies have come up with. I'm even more excited to see how these long-term benefits will integrate into the province. It's one thing to do an idea like this. It's another thing to actually have it embedded and in use. So I think the key next stage, which will be really important to see, is have these actually continue to be in use and see what the results are for people. Um, if you're inspired by what you see here today, this is a plug, guys. Sorry, I have to do this. <laughs> if you're inspired by what you see here, I highly recommend you check out the third annual BC Tech Summit. It's going to be from May 14th to 16th right here in Vancouver. It's delivered by the BC Innovation Council and the BC government. The summit's the biggest tech event in Western Canada, over 6,000 participants, including investors, entrepreneurs, and exhibitors. It showcases BC's tech sector throughout. We've sold out for the last two years. In fact, the biggest problem everybody tells us is there's too much to see in the two days of the summit. That's a problem I really like. Uh, tickets are on sale. See, I told you it was a plug. At bctechsummit.ca. If you purchase right now and use a code STIR399, you can buy a $399 ticket, a $500 savings from the normal price. And now back to why we're here today, building an innovation culture. I think that's really important. What this is all about is building an innovation culture. So kudos to the BC government for their commitment to procuring innovative technology-based solutions that continue to push our province forward and to these six incredible startups whose ingenuity and creativity are making British Columbia a better place to live for residents of this province. And lastly, to everyone in this room who has supported the local tech industry here in BC, without your support, innovation like we're going to see here today just couldn't happen. So if you're like me, you probably want to get things started. 
I'd thank, like to thank you all for being here, and I think we can start some extraordinary demonstrations. Thank you. Thanks, Carl, for your words. I always like sharing a stage with you. Um, and thank you, Minister. Thank you for taking the time to come today and uh, certainly to meet uh, some of the participants of the program. Um, so this, is, uh, this concludes the formal pres uh, speaking uh, component of today's event. Um, so we're just going to take a quick five-minute break. So if you want to grab a water, grab a coffee, and, uh, and for the teams presenting, get ready. Uh, we'll start again in about five minutes. So thank you. Okay, thanks everybody. I uh, hope you got a little bit more coffee and water. Um, so now is the time to hear from our five project teams. Uh, we got five teams, but you've heard six companies because we do have a collaboration on one of the projects as well. Um, so this very first startup and residence cohort uh, includes some of the best and the brightest. It's been really, really great to, uh, to see how these teams have come together. Um, and they're working on five really different, uh, different solutions. Um, a common thread through all of them um, has been data, and, uh, and that is a, that's pretty interesting to me around what government has and the type of help we need, um, and a lot of data is, is a part of that. Um, so these teams have come together through marathon discovery sessions uh, and worked through roadblocks and listened to different guest speakers uh, that we were able to bring in. Um, and they've gone through a fair amount of coffee and more than a couple of post-it notes. Uh, so during this pilot, uh, the companies have learned about working with government, which, uh, as the minister mentioned a moment ago, can be a little bit complex. We are a different, uh, a different beast. Um, but make no mistake, the government teams have learned a lot throughout this as well. Um, during the pilot, um, we have, uh, as public servants, have had the opportunity to try something new, um, to be given that freedom to work through a different type of a process. So whether it's um, using Agile, uh, whether it is just really remembering the iterative development of the, of the project that we're working on, um, but also uh, the incredible importance of user-centric design, and we'll hear a little bit more about that uh, in a few minutes. Um, and we're drawing on all of these lessons that we've been able to learn as we look towards the future of the Startup in Residence uh, program. And we will iterate on what we've done in the last uh, six months or so. And, uh, and we're excited about where it'll go next. Um, so that said, let's get on with some of the presentations. 